Welcome, everybody. Welcome to our second cooking class, and uh, hopefully second of many. Today's theme is Mother's Day brunch, and more importantly, it's getting comfortable using oils in the kitchen. So whether you're using them in cooking or whether it's to flavor a beverage, we're going to cover the whole gamut in the theme of Mother's Day brunch. So we will fairly quickly run through what could be a seven course meal, or if you were together, you could have this laid out in a nice little spread and people can just pick and choose. Uh, that's probably not going to be how this year's Mother's Day goes. This is our second Mother's Day during our pandemic. And my crazy idea was what if mothers or family members or friends were to put their heads together, each volunteer to make a, a dish, potluck style. And then if they live in the same you know, gener general vicinity, do porch drop-offs to one another, then hop online, like, just like we are right now, and enjoy their, their Mother's Day brunch together. I, it's such a such a lovely little idea that it really doesn't have to be a pandemic concept. It's something even where you could just everybody make the same one or two things. So if you aren't in the same regional, you know, vicinity, we could be uh, in far corners of the world and all still get together and have a party online. So I think that's kind of fantastic. And hey, that's the mess we have right now, <laughs> most of us. So I'm taking the first recipe, and I'd like to first talk about my tea. If uh, um, some of us are making teas, some coffees, some hot beverages, some cold beverages, as it happens, my two teas are cold. Um, that was just my preference. They were made earlier in the day. Uh, my first one, which will go with my first dish, is uh, I had all kinds of fun loose leaf teas. I don't know if you can see this, but I have whole chrysanthemum flower buds in here and osmanthus, which is a flower. You may recognize that one. It's in some of our rollers, known for its, its kind of sweetness. And so that's my intention here because I never put sweetener in my tea. I don't like sweet teas particularly, but it's nice when they have their own kind of natural sweetness. So I just plunged my French press down so that I've clamped down on all of my buds. And before I pour it into my glass, I'm going to use, hmm, what am I going to use? I'm gonna use ginger. I'm gonna take a little bit of ginger. I actually have a dog dish here. These are 50 to 70 times more potent than herbs and spices. And so this, you know, a tablespoon of dried ginger would be equivalent to a drop, uh, more or less. So I'm only going to put my drop in my little dish. Yes, this is a dog dish, but it's a good dish. And I was very careful, so I only had one drop there. I could take a toothpick through it, but what I'm gonna do here is just put a little on my fingertip, wipe my glass, because this is a really small glass. If I put the entire drop in here, I could probably drink it, but it would be really, really strong. So then I'll pour my tea. This could have been a sun tea, could have been served hot, it would be good either way, but there you go, it's that simple. So now I have chrysanthemum, osmanthus, and ginger tea. That sounds like a really good roller bottle. So that's my tea, which I will enjoy with what is called a vitality salad. I first had it in Bulgaria and I was so surprised at the simplicity and yet how complex it was. All it is, is raw shredded peeled beet, shredded peeled carrot, shredded tart green apple, so a Granny Smith, and then a little bit of lemon juice, fresh, and a clear oil, so something like grapeseed oil. That's it. It's a five ingredient <laughs> recipe. My mother would be so happy. And you can garnish with salt, but you actually don't even need salt or pepper. I'm gonna put it together. And my essential oil I'm going to use in it, I could use ginger again. I think I'm just going to stick with clementine, which is our product of the month this month. Just picked it for that very reason. I have two beautiful glasses here. This is a martini glass. I don't know if you can see it up close there. And this is a Shimai beer. I don't know what you'd call it. Like it's a little glass. It's perfect for that type of beer. But something like that or a dessert dish would be good for this because you, this isn't a large salad. This is a little one. I'm going to grab my tongs and my bottom layer is my shredded beets, which I'm hopefully not going to drop everywhere and stain my entire house. There we go. I'm going to put one little layer. So really only a tablespoon, maybe two in the bottom. There we go, just like so. I'm gonna change tongs now because those are purple. And next up, okay, can you see this here? Okay, beautiful. Next up, we have 
are carrot. And last up is the grated apple. So you see you have like a three layer, it almost looks like uh, three layers of sherbet or an ice, let's say. And then I will squeeze a little bit of lemon juice over top. Whoa, <laughs> and all over my kitchen. And this is my grapeseed oil here. I am going to use a drop of clementine. I think when it comes to citrus oils, you can be a bit more generous. I might put two or three drops of clementine in my tall glass of water, but I would only use one drop of ginger or one drop of peppermint. So we'll put one here. I could stir it, but I'm not really worried. I'm going to drizzle that over top, not that entire shot glass. It will really only wind up being a teaspoon or two, and that's the entire salad. You don't toss it because if you toss it, everything's purple. <laughs> and I would serve that with a little fork and people can just dig right in. You could grind a couple of grains of salt on if you like salt, it'll bring it all together. But as basic as that sounds, you think about juicing, this is like a juice in a glass, except with all the pulp, all the fiber and all the goodness. So I will enjoy that mm -hmm. with my tea. And I'm gonna pass it along to Natalie, who's gonna show us her sweet potato crusted mini quiche. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to share with you what I've already done. So I pre-baked my crust because this part alone took 20 minutes. And what I did was I shredded an entire sweet potato, like a huge, huge sweet potato. And then I mixed that with some almond flour, an egg, some garlic powder, salt and pepper. And that's it. And I just mashed it all up in a bowl and then made... 10 little balls, which I then formed into my um, quiche crust. So you can see this is what it looks like. It actually holds together really nicely. This was baked for 20 minutes and is now ready for my filling. So I have my eggs over here and you will be getting this recipe. Now, I'm not following the recipe to a T with what I'm putting inside my quiche, but you can. Uh, I'm using what I wanted to use. So I'll share with you what that is. I have my eggs I'm using black pepper and thyme essential oils and I'm going to add those right now so that I don't forget and I'm going to do two drops of black pepper we'll see how that turns out and I just want like a tiny 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 amount of thyme because I'm actually not a huge thyme lover or thyme whatever you want to call it I'm always confused whoops that's two drops great <laughs> I'm going to actually just mix it on my fork and then put it into my eggs. Okay, so you the recipe calls for milk with your eggs. I'm omitting that. I don't use milk in my recipes, at least not regular milk. Um, I have some pre-chopped arugula and spinach. They're babies, like a baby mix. I have some caramelized onions and zucchini that I'm adding in. So I'm going to drop a little bit of the veggies into my muffin cups. I'm going to add the eggs. I'm going to add some cheese just to one or two because I want one of my kids to try this so that I'm not eating 10 of these by myself. And it does call for goat cheese. I can't eat goat cheese and because I will be eating all of these, I'm omitting that as well. So this is what I mean by you make the recipe yours, whatever you prefer, whatever you want to do. It calls for sun-dried tomatoes. I'm not adding those just because I don't have them. So, um, you probably don't need to watch this part. I'll show you the finished product at the end, but I'm adding about, you know, a nice teaspoonful of my zucchini onion mushroom, and then a little bit of my greens to each muffin cup, pouring my egg over, adding a little sprinkle of cheese to two of them, and then popping that in the oven for 20 to 30 minutes. I'm not sure how long they will take because the recipe is for an entire quiche, like a big quiche, and obviously I'm making muffins, so I'm assuming they'll bake quicker, but I'm not sure. So I'll share with you my drink. Now, I'm not a huge tea drinker, so I've decided to make a bit of a spritzer today. I've taken some mixed frozen berries, and I'm going to add two drops of wild orange to that, and you could add lime, you could add lemon. Uh, I did pull out spearmint, but I don't know if I would actually like that in my in my spritzer, so I'm not going to add it. <laughs> and then I just have some sparkling water that I made with my soda stream. And that's it. And that should taste pretty good. And it's gonna look really pretty. So that's half of 
what we're going for anyways. Look at that, it's beautiful. There you go. So I'm actually going to enjoy that while I hand it over to, I don't even know who's next. Joanna, do you know, can you tell me who's next? I believe Josie's next with a cream cheese and microgreens, and cucumber finger sandwiches. Yes, I'm excited. I decided last minute to change up uh, one of the essential oils that I'm gonna be using because Natalie uh, used some black pepper and that is one of my favorite ones to cook with, but it inspired me just to change it up because we wanna show you versatility and how easy it is. So instead I'm choosing pink pepper. Uh, pink pepper is a little bit more mild than the black pepper. So if you do like more of a peppery flavor, maybe go for the black pepper in the cream cheese. But I'm going to choose to use pink pepper. I can use them together as well, and I have. And it's a good way to get pepper in for seasoning in meats and things that maybe my kids might not normally eat if they see pepper on top. So using the oil, awesome, awesome substitution. So what I'm going to make here is a cream cheese cucumber with some essential oils, little sandwiches. Now, super easy. I, I grabbed the Philadelphia cream cheese. Now, I know some people make their own cream cheese, and I'm not that um, inspired at this point to make my own. So I get the good old Philadelphia cream cheese. You could use this with uh, other types, so you don't have to feel that. That's the only kind that you have to do. Uh, and I am going to add, I, I have my prep bowl here and this prep bowl holds about, uh, let me just see here, about three quarters of a cup, you know, between a half and three quarters of a cup. I'm like Joanna, I don't typically measure most things out when I cook, I just toss it in and see what comes of it. Now, because I'm putting it in a cream uh, and a heavier cream, I'm actually gonna take one drop and I'm not um, gonna be too stingy on the pepper that I put in this cream cheese, but I'm gonna start with just one drop and then likely will add more if I feel that I need more. So I'm going to mix this up. I can already smell it. The pepper definitely has a nice aroma to it. And it's so easy just to kind of blend in there. And then I'm going to spread it on my grainy bread. So I asked my husband today to go out and buy me some seed bread because I don't like the regular bread myself. It kind of makes me, um, oh, I just prefer the seeded bread. So I'm gonna take my cream cheese and just kind of spread it on here. And if you love cream cheese like crazy, just go for it. Spread as much as you want on there. These are so lovely with the cucumbers because the cucumbers actually stick. I don't know if you've ever made a cucumber sandwich without cream cheese. They tend to fall out when you try to bite them. So I like the cream cheese for the stick power. So I'm just sticking my cucumbers onto my cream cheese here. And that's how I've done that part. You can hopefully see that and microgreens. Now my children have planted organic and edible crust microgreens and this was so great because we have not a lot yet, they're still growing, probably have enough to put in one sandwich here. And so I'm just going to take my microgreens and I know these are pesticide free because they just sprouted and I don't use pesticides and there's nothing that's landed on there either because they've grown in my house, which is amazing. And I'm just going to add the microgreens on there not get any of the dirt. And then top it off. Now you can do this way. You can put more cream cheese on the other side if you like, or if that's enough cream cheese for you, just put the lid on, move that aside. And for Mother's Day, I'm, I mean, for every occasion, I kind of like to cut my sandwiches in nice little triangles just for presentation. And I usually put a toothpick in it if I was presenting and serving them, but I'm not doing that. So here you have it. You can see the beautiful little look of the layers, the green and the white with the beautiful bread. And that's the sandwich. Now, before I move on to my tea, I did do a quick addition just last minute when Natalie said um, sun-dried tomatoes. This was something that I had already done, so I'm not taking any more extra time to to do this, but I had tomatoes that were not going to last very long. So I have an air fryer and it has a dehydrate setting. So a while ago, I took my tomatoes, sliced them thin and dehydrated them. 
but then I didn't know what to do with them because nobody else in my family really wanted to eat them. So I had to preserve them. And I put them in olive oil with a drop of basil and a drop of oregano in the olive oil first. And then I poured it into my sun-dried tomatoes. So as you can hopefully see without me spilling on my computer, maybe I'll take one out and let you see. Sun-dried tomatoes. That's another way to use the essential oils. So what I would do just for garnishment is put that on top of my little sandwich. Now, tea, I do like all sorts of teas. I'm not a coffee drinker, but sometimes I just don't really want the actual tea itself. I just want some flavored water. And I love water, but sometimes I feel I need that coziness of warmth. So I want it in the form of a tea, quote unquote. So I use a uh, local honey, actually a gentleman down my street has bees and he makes his own honey. So I do prefer a little bit of sweetness. So I choose to use the local honey grown from my neighbor. I have my water boiled and I'm just gonna pour because I do like to make more than one cup because um, I sip this throughout the day even when it does get cold. So I fill my little teapot. What I'm gonna do because of the potency of the oils, for me, they probably would be just fine with one drop of each. In fact, I might add two or three in a, a pot this size. But for demonstration purposes, because if you are gonna be making it on your own, this is probably better if you're going to sweeten it with uh, say your, your honey, just take a spoonful of your honey. And then um, I'm gonna take a little bit more because this is gonna go with the whole pot. And then I'm going to use Roman chamomile and bergamot together. So this is a nice way to make a calming, soothing, uh, infused beverage. Now I did end up getting a little bit more than one drop in there. Don't fret, don't get upset. Um, you can always add more honey or add more water, make it bigger, bigger batch. But generally in honey, this is something I would make with a couple drops anyways. So I'm just gonna take my honey and I'm gonna put that into my warm water and let that stir up. You can already smell the calming aromas of the honey, bergamot and Roman chamomile. And there you have it poured into, I like a big cup of tea. So I'm gonna pour that into my cup of tea. If you want for color to make this a little bit more pretty as Joanna's teas were, you can always add a tea bag. I prefer for calming teas, a rooibos because you're not dealing with any caffeine and it smells lovely. A little bit of honey, a little bit of bergamot and chamomile. When this cools down, I will be drinking it and I'm gonna taste our sandwich. So there you have it. Thank you. That was awesome. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you took that recipe from me. <laughs> I would have been so scattered if I'd had to do two back to back. So I'm back again to do a sandwich and then I'll be handing off after that to the rest of our esteemed chefs this evening. So this sandwich is my own creation, but it's kind of an ode to a trip to Italy that my husband and I took quite a while ago with our dog. And my favorite bread is one that we actually buy at Costco. It is a sourdough starter um, seeded multigrain bread. So a little bit healthier. You could make this as a proper sandwich, or you could even do it almost like a crostini, where you just have everything mounted on it. Uh, I just find that a little bit messier, so I'll probably top my sandwich so it's easier to eat. So my basic ingredients here are gorgonzola, and that's the sweet gorgonzola, so the type you might get on your pizza. There is a picante version, which is more aged. It's a harder cheese and it's really spicy. If you do not like blue cheeses at all, and I know there are many of you out there, you could be swapping this out. You could use like a camembert or a brie. You could use like a boursin, you know, one of those ones that has herbs in it. Or if you're a no dairy person, I even contemplated making my own seed cheese. Could have done it, uh, but it was just a little over the top. And since we were going for the prosciutto, I figured what the heck, let's throw caution to the wind and have the dairy too. So we have, I've softened mine so that it's spreadable like cream cheese. I'm gonna go ahead and spread a little. A little goes a long, long way with gorgonzola. So another good reason to choose that one because if I were choosing something that I love, like Jarlsberg or Gruyere, like there'd be like 16 slices on there because <laughs> I can't help myself. 
So I have prosciutto as my next layer here. I didn't care for the look of my prosciutto, to be honest, I couldn't see it in the package. It's your typical San Daniele, but some of them are a little fattier than others. So instead of keeping it in its raw state, I actually put it in a frying pan and crisped it so that it wouldn't be so floppy and stringy in the fat. So although it's not crispy like bacon, it's still not, uh, it's, it's just got a little bit of texture, which might work out to my advantage. So I would lay a few slices on my bread just like so. I'm gonna pick the leaner ones since this is my sandwich. And just a thin layer. Nice thing about Italian sandwiches, I think, is that it's more about the flavor than the humongous hero, you know, kind of Subway sub sandwich that we've all come to uh, know, love, and drop all over our clothes while we eat. This is a little bit daintier. Okay, so I'll try and show this so you can see it. My next layer, I have steamed some asparagus, which is so appropriate for Mother's Day. It's seasonal. I am literally just laying them across. I have, mine are very skinny. These are the ones my husband chose today. So I'm gonna do quite a lot of them. And later on, I'm going to secure my sandwich with a toothpick so that they don't all roll all over the place. So where does the oil come in? I have a little bit of a really good extra virgin olive oil. It's actually a chili oil. I got a garlic clove in there because I like garlic just to give it a bit of a hint of flavor. I have enough olive oil in there that I think I can get away with a, a full drop of rosemary, but I'm not going to use all the oil. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a little drizzle of that oil. Let's hope I only get one because two drops of rosemary would mean I'd need to start over. <laughs> that would just be way, 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 way too much. And in fact, I will even take a spoon. Good thing I'm right here by my spoons and I'm going to drizzle a little bit on, just like so, so I don't make a big mess. It's just to give a little flavor, okay? A little more, that's it. And although I did list this as a rosemary balsamic drizzle, I went the other way and I put it in the oil. But what I have here is a balsamic syrup. It is actually balsamic vinegar and it's a nice balsamic, but it's been reduced so that it has a much thicker consistency, which means it's not gonna be, you know, drowning my plate in brownness. So I'm just taking the nearest little drizzle of that. And I could serve it like that, or I would slice it, but then, you know, it does risk being a little messy. I could put the lid on top, just like so, or if I really wanted to gild the lily, I could put cheese on top too stick it on there. That would probably be the, the smartest move, but I'm not going to. I'm going to try to keep it lean here. And I will slice that up. I'm actually not going to do that on camera because it's so messy. Poke two toothpicks in there. And I've got two sandwiches, but if I wanted finger tea sandwiches, I could even cut that into four and just put toothpicks right in them. So my tea to accompany is one that we like very popular in the house. I actually have a whole drawer of tea bags. This one's herbal. So it's one Egyptian licorice tea bag, and the other is an organic peppermint tea bag. I've put it in my French press just so that you could see it here like so. In this case, rather than put the oil right in my cup, I've got fennel. Fennel, licorice, licorice, fennel, you know, they're in the same family. I think I can get away with one drop. I know it will be potent, but I like it. So I will do that. You could do a toothpick swirl in your cup, or that finger trick we showed you. I would stir that, I'm not going to on camera, and then pour that into my other little teacup, and away I go. This is another one. It's beautiful hot. I probably prefer it hot. My husband prefers it cold, but I'm drinking it cold today since he was kind enough to make it for me this morning. And there you go, that is my pairing. May seem like an unusual one, but I think fennel, rosemary, I think it's a bit of a match made in heaven, and it's going to work with this sandwich. You're just going to have to trust me on that. <laughs> okay, so that's it for me. Next up, I believe we have Karen Tabulary. She's going to make for us the yummy fruit kebabs with a tangerine fruit dip. Take it away, Karen. 
Thanks, Joanna. Actually, I changed it up just at the very last, uh, just the oil on it. Um, I decided to be daring and try something new for a change because I don't normally do that. And I'm not one who usually cooks with my oils because it's just uh, my husband does a lot of the cooking and he's not into the oils yet that much. So I decided that I'm going to do something on the wild side today. So the dip is uh, one package of cream cheese and I use just the no name brand, but I use the light cheese because I try and cut down on some of the fat I eat. And then it called for um, one whole package and one cup of vanilla yogurt. I used a Greek vanilla yogurt and it called for half a cup of honey. And I took it and I put the recipe in, cut it in half because of the fact that I didn't need a whole lot and I won't eat that much of it. So I'll eat the fruit afterwards, but I'm not, I'm trying not to eat some of that stuff because of the cholesterol. So I'm trying to behave, but I decided at the last minute, I have not used my cooking cuisine oil. So I pulled out the tropical oil and I'll tell you, I didn't realize what was in here until today. And these are most of my favorite oils, which is orange, lemon, lime, grapefruit, green mandarin, bergamot, and yuzu, uzo, yuzo, I'm not sure which it is because I've never heard of that one before, and lang lang, and that's one of my favorites. I love the smell of it, but green mandarin, I actually drink it in my water because it's supposed to be really good for you. So I started with, I've mixed it up prior, and I've put uh, one drop in here, but I'm also going to put another drop in because it really, it was good. And I want to taste some more of that Hawaiian or the tropical. Like I said, I hadn't used any of them yet. So this is, this was a first for me. So I just took that and I'm going to give it a little stir. Now the fruit I've already taken and I've made little kebabs and I did bananas, um, cantaloupe, um, green and orange. I did pineapple and there's grapes in here. So now I didn't find that this was a drizzle kind of dessert because this doesn't really drizzle. If you notice, it's just a plum. I could probably add some more um, milk to it or I could add some extra oil to it uh, to make it that way. But I just kind of took it and I did this with it. And I'll do this one here. So they came out kind of cute. I thought they were pretty cool and the dip is absolutely amazing I have tried it but then I did a twist so that I could give it to my husband and let him see if he'll taste it and I put a drizzle of chocolate on this one just to make it a little bit more wild and crazy for him and my tea I happen to be a tea drinker I love tea and I like to use just the oils straight by themselves and I use the oils I tend to when I'm really not feeling that great, I do a uh, hot chocolate and I put on guard uh, lemon and, or lavender and peppermint in it. So today I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna make a wild orange and peppermint tea. So I just did one of each and I didn't add any honey to this one because again, I'm trying to behave. So I'm gonna try and do it and I will have my lemon or my wild orange and peppermint and my tropical with lemon in it and all those other yummy oils in it for my dessert. And that's it. It was easy. I like that. Wild orange and peppermint tea. That sounds awesome. <laughs> what an idea. Love it. The diffuser, trying it in the tea. It is right. really good. It's really good. And I love your hot chocolate concept. That sounds even better. On that is one of my weaknesses, but what I treat myself when I'm not feeling that great. And it's one way to put on guard in it. I don't like on guard in coffee or tea by itself. So if I add a bit of the lavender and the peppermint with it, it's cool. Huh. Amazing. There we go. Learn something completely new, which I'm now going to have to try. All right. So who is next? I believe we have Cindy who yeah. is going to impress us with her fantastic baking skills. Uh, and we'll be featuring lemon and lavender scones. So Cindy, you want to take it away? Love to. I, uh, I love baking. Um, I've baked for years and years, but I tend to be a little bit impulsive when I try to bake. I, I'll catch something on a whim and then end up getting halfway through a recipe and realize I'm missing ingredients. So I am, I'm, I'm really good at substituting stuff now. So as we go, I can try and give you a few ideas for substitutes. 
um, and things that that I would have tweaked in this recipe. Feel free to follow it as it is, but some tweaks that I've made and some suggestions that you could also do. Now I'm going to start a little bit out of order from the recipe that you'll get emailed just because I want to um, explain. You need a buttermilk for this. So easy way to make buttermilk. This is using three quarters of a cup of milk and then adding a quarter cup of lemon juice to it. And then you got to let it sit for a little bit. So I've done that already. Now, if you don't want to use dairy in the recipe, um, you can try soy milk and doing that in unsweetened soy milk or coconut milk, I would think would work as well, except that you're going to alter the flavor of your scones a little bit with that. So I've got my uh, buttermilk all ready to go. And then it also calls for mixing a quarter cup of sugar with um, some lemon zest. So this is where I would probably run into an issue because I don't, I don't cook a whole lot. I bake more than I cook. So I often don't have lemons in the house. So I am so glad to have oils because this is a great easy substitute. You can either use it in addition to, or you can use it um, just on its own. So I don't have the lemon zest. I'm just going to show it to you without. So because of that, it, it asks for you to mix the sugar with the lemon zest and kind of crumble it up so that you really flavor the sugar with the zest. So I'm just going to mix the sugar in. I tried to pre-measure a few things to make it easy. I should have taken the lid off. Um, so I'm just going to add the sugar and often I will find substitutions for sugar, but it's only a quarter cup in this recipe that makes 12 spoons. So I didn't, I didn't bother for this. And then I'm going to take a um, tablespoon of baking soda, baking powder, I should say, sorry. I just get those two confused, but if you confuse them in a recipe, it's going to be a disaster. So baking powder, you need one tablespoon in the recipe. And then a half a teaspoon of salt. You can always cut back on that too. If, if salt's not your thing, you can you can bring it down to a pinch. I really didn't notice it in the recipe, so I don't I don't I didn't find it was too much. And then a half a teaspoon of the baking powder. So right now I'm just going to mix all of that together. Sorry, I know my, my kitchen's awkward for this kind of a demo. You're looking at my side instead of face on, but just mix that together. And then it calls for a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. So I'm just going to add that right now to the buttermilk. And then at this point, I'm going to give it a stir. Now I have a plastic measuring cup. So normally we would not recommend um, adding citrus oils to plastic, but it's only going to be in there for a second. Now the recipe that I did yesterday, I added three drops of lemon oil and then I added three drops of lavender to that as well. So if you were going to follow the recipe and make it look really pretty, you would do the lemon zest because that would show up in your scones. You'd actually see those little tasty lemon bits and using um, like dried lavender as well. So you'd see those bits and then I'm just going to mix it all together. So yeah, if you're going to use the actual like the lemon zest and the lavender you'd probably want to cut down on your essential oils but I would still do because when you bake um, when the oils heat up they tend to um, lose some of their flavor a little bit and then uh, you, I wouldn't do too much less or you won't really taste. So I'm just going to mix this up and then I oh and the butter I almost forgot the butter mixing in the Butter. It asks for cold butter and to be cubed. But like I say, I kind of tend to just wing it a little bit. So I'm just going to mix this in. And then once this is well mixed, I'm just going to take the batter and knead it a little bit. Now it says in the recipe to not knead it too much, but you want to make sure that it's well mixed and so you don't get any flour bits loose. I thought this was such a great idea to, to do. And um, my family, we're actually taking this uh, brunch thing, our virtual brunch. Uh, we're we're going to do it kind of a drop off pickup. So we're going to have uh, somebody drop off or start the first pickup. And as they go from house to house, drop off their item and pick up the other person's item. And then we're all going to meet online and have our, our snacks together. So 
I made a few batches. This is now my third batch of this one. And then all you do is you um, set it out on a baking sheet. I like, I like to wear gloves when I do this just because I'm weird about what things in my fingernails. <laughs> so, so I'm getting a little gloves here. And then you're just going to put it, once it's kneaded, you're going to drop it on a floured surface. Actually, I'll, I'll, I can do that after. We won't do that one on camera. Roll it out. You want it to be about five inches by eight inches. And then you're going to cut it down the, the length center, lengthwise and then cut it into thirds. So you've got like six squares. And then in that, you're going to cut them in triangles and then separate them out on your baking sheet and then bake them for 20 minutes. Now, it also calls for like to dust it with, I don't know if dusting is the right word, but do you like do like a milky coating to add to the coloring? Feel free to omit that. I've done it with, I've done it without. And I've not really noticed a difference. So again, if dairy is something that you're trying to avoid, it's it's not a big deal. It's not really going to alter the flavor of it. And then it called for the icing. And because I just wanted to avoid the extra sugars, I just left it. So I will show you the finished product there. This is my little batch ready for pickup. And uh, they're, they're all ready to go. So I mean, it was pretty quick to put throw together and it's really full of flavor. They were really yummy. And then for, to go with this, for my beverage, I have, I don't drink a lot of teas. I'm more of a, I'm not even a coffee. I'm a, I'm a latte person. So <laughs> I don't have a lot of tea bags in the house either. This is, this is again where I'm like, oh, why do I feel for, for tea if somebody is over? But tea just seems to go with Mother's Day. So I, instead of using a tea bag, will we'll flavor with my oils and, and call it a tea. So for this one, I'm going to do bergamot and just add one drop. I don't usually add any sugar or anything to it. I just drink it like this. But lemon would be a good, a good one to use too to go with the stones. And that's it. So I'll just hand it off to the next person now. Boy, when when am I going to receive my scones? Those look really <laughs> good. <laughs> I hope you can bring those down. That would be great. They should come out with the mail these days. You might not get it for a while. Oh uh, yeah. You can mail it. That's fine. I'll try. <laughs> Okay, so next up we have Karen Kelly Baba, who has the most delectable recipe to share with us. The wild or it's wild orange and blueberry muffins, and with a surprise twist. So I'll leave it to share that with us. <laughs> okay, I'm sitting here relaxing in my office, and uh, I've already made these. This is my second batch actually, and I've I've added a little twist to them. So. Um, First of all, the ingredients are very, very simple. Um, I took a half a cup of butter. Uh oh. Hello, oh, geez, for a minute. I know, I was gone for a second. Um, I took a half a cup of butter and softened it. And then I uh, am trying to stay away from refined sugar, but this actually calls for honey. So I used an organic honey and I creamed those together. And then I added three large eggs um, and um, orange juice, actually. So a cup of orange juice to this. So there's no refined sugar other than the juice. And I got uh, a nice orange juice, mixed that in, as well as a half a teaspoon of wild orange. So that's where my oil came in. And it's a half a teaspoon, actually, and it tastes wonderful. It's not overpowering at all when you when you get finished baking it all. So again, like Cindy was saying, then there's a cup and a half of flour, uh, some baking powder, and then some cinnamon. So I actually added my powdered cinnamon, um, as well as a quarter of a teaspoon of lemon juice, my blueberries, it was kind of like added all in, folded the blueberries in, and I actually had frozen uh, organic blueberries, the really tiny ones from, I actually get at Costco in a really big bag. I have a lot of my fruit off season that is not fresh necessarily. I use the frozen, very, very handy. It's always in your freezer. Um, and as well as a cup and a half of coconut. So I had organic frozen coconut cubes and I took them, let them defrost. And then I put them in a little chopper and chopped them really fine. So that goes in there as well. 350, about a half an hour. This actually, the recipe is for muffins, it says, but when you read the recipe, it actually tells you to put it in a nine by 13. I did not do that. 
what I decided to do adding a little bit to this recipe is I added a little bit of cassia in it so that it was a little twist to it um, and I'll tell you about my drink after that so put that all together and I I decided that I would show you I made them in tiny little muffins to start with the really small ones I used the silicone um, baking um, cup holders and then I also made larger ones like you can see this now that's that's what the recipe called for kind of plain they taste wonderful not overly sweet but I wanted to dress it up a bit so I made a sugar-free lemon blueberry compote and I added so really good your, your blueberries you've got your antioxidants so trying to keep it healthy and what I did was I took 15 ounces of frozen wild organic blueberries again put that in a saucepan added two tablespoons of freshly squeezed lemon juice and then just for fun because I had my lemon oil I added another drop of lemon oil in there as well as a half a teaspoon of vanilla so I used the simply organic vanilla pure vanilla cook that up for about 15 minutes and it it thickens as you cook and then let I let it sit for cool for about five to ten minutes and after I took my um, muffins out, I just spooned it on top. So you can see these, the tiny ones, it's delectable. And then I also did it with for the larger ones. So it looks really pretty. The presentation is gorgeous and they taste incredible. The other nice thing is if you did want something a little sweeter, um, this is perfect for me and my family loves it as well, but you could do like a lemon glaze with it. So take some powdered sugar, some lemon zest and some uh, lemon juice, put that together and drizzle that over if you wanted like a glaze instead. So there's a lot of different things you could do. They freeze really well if you want to freeze them. Um, you know, once you just finish cooking, let them cool, freeze them, then take them all out, keep your um, compote in the fridge. And then this can stay good for about a week. So this gives you an idea of the consistency of it. It's great on if you wanted to do like a pancake or a waffle or something like that it's great to have you can use it for a lot of other recipes so super easy it was delicious um and of course i wanted to be a little different so while you were all making teas i did coffee so this is my coffee and it's it's funny because i actually before we even had this i just started playing i've always used oils in my water i actually have a little holder in my kitchen i'm gonna try and bring this up this is one i got from leadership and i love it so I've got a lot of my water and now tea and coffee oils. I don't know if you can see them, but so what I did for this one, I thought to go with these muffins and something that I've been using a lot in my coffee is cassia. So I love cinnamon, but it's a little bit stronger. It, you know, if I were using cinnamon, I think I would probably just swipe the, um, the glass around the rim or something and then pour my coffee in. But I can actually put a drop of this and it's just delectable it's amazing I love it in my coffee some other ones I might use is lavender spearmint peppermint is great in coffee I could even put a drop of of on guard but those are the, the I don't know what it is about the cassia with the blueberry and the orange it's really really good so that's what I had enjoy I think I'm definitely going to have to drive by and pick one of those up. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. You better hurry up, though. I don't know how long they'll last. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'll see you in an hour. No. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, we're going to circle back, though, to Natalie now, because hopefully, hopefully, her little mini quiches are ready to show, and hopefully she'll even take a bite and tell us how yummy they are. So, Natalie, are you, are you ready for us? I am. I just pulled them out. Put them on a pretty little plate so the middle one is the plain one it just has the egg mixture and some cheddar cheese and then the others are with my fillings the only thing i would say visually the edges are a little crisp the recipe says to put aluminum foil over but i don't i didn't have aluminum foil so if i were to make these again which i probably will i will make sure i cover them so that they're not so crispy but besides that they smell good they look good they're still a little hot so I probably won't take a bite right now, but I will definitely keep you posted because my mouth is watering because they look so good. I love quiche. It's one of my favorite brunch foods. So yeah, I'm quite pleased with them, I have to say. Those look amazing. Like I'm gonna have to make those. Yeah, it looks like in a big, in a big uh, pan, 
but I'm afraid that it would turn into mush when you cut it. So I think mini is the way to go. Yeah. I love how you made a real crust with it. You can see it totally holds up, right? It's awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. I'm happy. I'm excited. I did take a little bite of the crust and it tastes really good. <laughs> awesome. That's so great. You'll like this. So we've, we've barreled through everything in kind of record time, but before I, I ask if anybody has any questions, um, I wonder if we should maybe recap a little bit about cooking with oils. Um, generally speaking, oils are best used sort of at the garnish stage rather than cooked right in if you care to retain their therapeutic value. But if that's not important to you, I say go right ahead and cook those oils right in. I've done that where I've made soups or chilies or stews, and I've put all the oils I want in there at the beginning. What happens is they, some of them get a little bit muted in flavor, and then you can adjust at the end. But two oils I wanted to highlight are oregano and thyme, that those two actually retain all of their therapeutic value, even when cooked. So uh, I think that that might free you up to be a little more liberal, whereas let's say with basil, basil, uh, or if you're using one of the mint oils, you might prefer to stir that in. Uh, my favorite way to do that is to use a little bit of a, an olive oil or something so that I can drizzle rather than try to poke that one drop, you know, and get it, get it around. So uh, one of the best uses really of essential oils, I think are in salad dressings, um, you know, or any type of sauce. So that's why I drizzled on my sandwich. It was easier to do that than to try to mix the oil in with the cheese, let's say, although I could have done it. In the end, I actually softened it to the point of being completely melted. <laughs> I didn't want to be fighting with the bread and, and break holes in it. But, and then when, when it comes to citrus oils, I found I get quite liberal. So if I were making, we, we've talked about peppermint brownies in the past, that might take three or four drops of peppermint oil. But if I decided to go citrus instead, I might go as many as eight in a, in a brownie recipe. Remember if, if it came, if it cut into 16 or 12 squares, it's less than a drop per brownie. So experiment away. There were so many more oils I was tempted to use, but I think we've covered a really nice range tonight. Um, does anybody have any thoughts, questions, concerns? Uh, hopefully we can answer those for you. I, I'm looking in the chat. Sorry, I wanted to add one thing, Joanna. One substitution that I meant to share was for the butter because we were doing dairy-free options and then because I almost missed it, I almost missed uh, giving the substitution. Coconut oil is a good substitution for that. I had it sitting here so I would remember and I still forgot that, yeah, you can always trade your butter for coconut oil. Have you ever tried that? Like, have you cooked with, and, and do they do they hold up the same way? You know how they butter do. is solid at room temp and, and coconut oil, the unrefined yeah. stuff certainly is. Yeah. At the first batch that I tried, I did substitute the coconut oil and you, okay. I didn't know. The so they're not the greasy and leaching out or anything like that. Well, that's, that is good to know. I've never done that substitution, even though we do like coconut oil. That would be worth trying. Like the hard coconut oil, yeah. Yep, of course. Okay, I just want to give you a quick feedback on my quiche. So I did try it and I have to say the two drops of pepper, I can taste that. It has a good little zingy bite to it and the time is perfect. Not overpowering, it's so good. I'm so happy with these. I wish I could share them with you all. <laughs> you know, I did want to mention something I forgot to say is one of the things that, I, like I was mentioning to you, I'm not I'm just trying to stay away from refined sugar, but for those people who do or who like sugar in their teas or things, essentially oil or essential oil flavored sugars, you can actually take like mm -hmm. a couple tablespoons of sugar and add maybe three drops of like wild orange, tangerine, lemon, grapefruit, like bergamot or lime or something, or even just to take your toothpick with your cinnamon or cassia oil combine it with that and then keep that and hold, you know, hold on to it till you have your teeth and then sprinkle a little bit of sugar in it. So it'll add to, it stays really good with the sugar, you know? That's a nice idea. Blend. And it will disperse better as well, rather than float yes. around off the top. Right. Yeah. yeah. Even yeah. adding it to your people, like adding to like oatmeal or like a lemonade or something like that. Same I with salts, right? You could use salt yeah. too. Okay, that was my point. I was going to make was it the very same thing with the the 
culinary oils that we got mm-hmm. with our holiday uh, swag this year. I've tried that with the Mexican one and with the Italian one, just in a nice finishing salt. And mm-hmm. it's really interesting. That's not typically how I cook because I like to put my herbs and spices right in the dish, but it's nice to be more subtle in you in your cooking and then when it comes to the table just sort of hit it with that big punch of flavor it's it's fantastic there was one other thing that i thought of while josie was talking when she made her little switch from black pepper to pink that that's one i would suspect most people don't know this but pink pepper is actually the cashew tree and so if anybody has a cashew allergy that might be one to stay away from Normally, we don't say that about essential oils. People that have sensitivities or allergies can often use the essential oil because it doesn't really have the protein from the fruit or the spice or whatever in it. But I did meet somebody once who said she cannot use pink pepper oil. She has an anaphylactic allergy to cashews. So I'm passing that along. There you go. You know what I was also thinking of sandwiches. I wanted to let you guys know that I did take a bite of the sandwich. (laughs) And it's delicious. I have not had this before. I probably would enjoy myself the black pepper because the pink pepper is very subtle. Um, or I could have added another couple drops. But um, I was inspired when Natalie said she tasted hers to take a bite out of this. And um, the sun-dried tomato with some of our basil and oregano as well. Excellent. I'm sensing a picnic in our future when we can gather. <laughs> I think we should do drop-offs next time. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that could be arranged, except that I'm already midway through my sandwich. Sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Karen, were you going to say something? I was going to say something. One of the other things that we're going to be adding is is uh, a, a link to the cookbook. And one of the things that's in there that I think we should mention is how good essential oils can be used in marinades for, for different meats and things, right? So it can give you, I mean, we have so many different oils. You could use like basil or cardamom, even cilantro, cumin, we have fennel and ginger, marjoram, oregano, rosemary. So all of those things are great to be, whether you want something sweet or savory, right? The, the, the using not marinating your meat, even vegetables, seafood, or anything that you're going to cook later, especially in barbecue time, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, there's some recipes here that look delicious. I think we'll have to do an outdoor barbecue, you know, mm-hmm. cooking demo as you know the third in our series but another thing too don't feel like you're confined to one oil like I'm just gonna put a drop of one oil in this Um, what I have done in the past is I have a concept in mind uh, whether it's chai you know or it's uh, some type of Indian spicing or I like to make my version of, of Chinese five spice but with oils and I would take a few drops I mean you just have to be confident and know that you know you have room to adjust so I would take an empty bottle maybe an empty bottle of cinnamon let's say and then start adding all the oils that you know are on my five spice blend and keep tasting along the way and when it's the right combination it will be a sizable bottle but then I could take one or two drops of that blend and that I'm not putting one drop of each because quite often they're, they're just not equal. So one drop of cinnamon beside one drop of say fennel, the cinnamon will completely out, you know, overpower and, and really disguise the fennel. So, but if it were one drop of cinnamon and five drops of fennel, you know what I mean? That might be the right combination. So yes, it takes a little bit of experience and finesse, but it's totally worth the experiment, especially if you have all those oils sitting there and have been wondering what to use them for this is your chance to play. So yeah, maybe we should end on that note if there aren't any other questions. This has been a whole lot of fun. I hope to do it again with everybody. And I I can't tell you how much I like collaborating. I think that is the way to go in these fun monthly events.